Good morning. Thank you very much for the introduction. So today I present joint work with Benedikt Beuscher and Markus Dumut on the security of cracking resistant password walls. I think we all can agree that we have problems memorizing multiple strong passwords, thus we tend to reuse them on a variety of services, and that's probably not a very good idea. So a possible solution is to use a password vault. A password vault stores our credentials in a container encrypted under a single master password. This way, we don't have to remember them and just need to know this master password. However, it is unknown what we can do when this encrypted vault gets stolen. So before I start, I want to introduce this concept of cracking resistant password vaults first. So password vaults, sometimes called password managers, are available on a variety of platforms, for example, on the web, as mobile applications, as dedicated desktop applications, and uh, maybe you are familiar with this notification from Mozilla Firefox prompting whether it should store the credentials for this website or not. So it might happen that you are using a password vault without even noticing. On the technical side, um, a password vault can be implemented via password-based encryption. So the master password and assault is fed into a key derivation function. This should be a cryptographically sound, um, secure hash function in an iterated fashion, for example, PBKDF2. And then the output of this key derivation function is the key that is used for encrypting the domain password um, with a block cipher, for example, AES. This ciphertext is then stored on disk. The problem here is that nowadays, users want to have their passwords all around, for example, on their mobile device, so they started to synchronize this ciphertext with cloud services. And here, if an attacker is able to breach the cloud service, he can access the encrypted container without the users even noticing. So next, I want to make sure that you all understand the difference between a normal password vault and a cracking resistant one. If you use a normal password vault and enter the correct master password, then the vault checks the password and if it's correct, it decrypts the vault and shows the credentials in plain text. However, if you use an incorrect master password, then the vault denies access and the user is prompted to try again. In contrast to this, there are cracking resistant password vaults. Here, for the correct master password case, the same happens. However, if we use an incorrect master password, they change a little bit. Here, the vault still decrypts, but does not deny access, and instead shows a decoy. This concept was introduced by Bojanov et al. at Osorix 2010, and they used a dedicated, predefined set of decoy vaults um, in their system called Camouflage. So how can we implement such a cracking resistant password vault? Of course, we start with password-based encryption, but if you use an incorrect master password, the output of the key derivation function will be not the correct key, and if you try to decrypt the ciphertext, you end up with random garbage. So it must be something more than password-based encryption. First of all, we should make sure that we use a block cipher and a mode of operation of this block cipher that we can decrypt the ciphertext under any key, and this will result in a bit string that must be indistinguishable for every key used, even if you use the correct key. Then this bit string is inserted into a magic black box, and the output of this box is a domain password. And this concept is called honey encryption. It was introduced by Jules and Ristenpart at Eurocrypt 2014, and its main component is called a distribution transforming encoder. And as we are dealing with passwords here, we, we call it a natural language encoder, or short NLE. And the main component of this natural language encoder are two algorithms, namely encode and decode. So if you use a bit string, it can be decoded to a domain password, a plausible looking one, and a domain password can be encoded to a bit string. The first implementation of this concept of using password-based encryption and honey encryption in a password vault that is cracking resistant is called NoCrack. It was introduced by Jatajee et al. at SMP 2015. 
and its natural language encoder is based on a probabilistic context-free grammar approach. So what are the main benefits of such a cracking resistant password vault? Well, for every tested master password an attacker tries to crack the vault, he will end up with a decoy. And the only way to verify whether this decoy is the real one or a decoy is by opening it, taking out a password, going online, and check whether we can log in or not. And by this, we convert a offline guessing attack into something called online guessing attack. So we are no longer limited by the hardware, but by the service. And that is very great news, because now we are, can no longer make, for example, 10 to the power of 12 guesses, but only, if we are optimistical, 10 guesses per day. And so, uh, I mean, in this way, we are, uh, it's a huge success in, in, in terms of security. And what about this honey encryption? Well, in contrast to camouflage, we are now able to generate those decoy walls on the fly, and we are no longer limited to a predefined set. With this, I finish my background slides and introduce the attack we conducted in our paper. So we attacked no crack. Um, after this, I will present the results of our attack and a possible solution how to fix the flaw we found in a system called Adaptive Natural Language Encoder. So a year ago, we asked the question, how can we crack a cracking resistant password vault? Well, if we use the correct master password, the bit string is fed into the decode function, decodes it, we end up with a domain password. And this domain password should follow a real unknown password distribution. For example, as you can see here. But if we use the incorrect master password, it follows a decoy password distribution. And as in this example, if those distributions are not the same or in any case can be distinguished, we have an attack here. And that's the main idea. So our attack idea is that we cannot know the real password distribution, but we can approximate no cracks decoy distribution by sampling from it. So if we observe any outliers that do not follow no cracks distribution, we can use them for ranking. So our attack um, consists of four steps. First of all, we approximate this distribution of decoys from no crack. Then we trial the, cr the cracking resistant vault. We rank the candidates we get, and we don't know whether it's a real vault or a, d or a decoy. And then we do this online verification to check whether our ranking is successful. To be, go into more details, First of all, in the first step, we repeatedly sample passwords and we use random strings for this approach. And we evaluate the KDF and trial decrypt the vault. Of course, evaluating the KDF and trial decrypting is computationally expensive, so we can skip this password-based encryption part and simply generate a random bit string and feed it into the natural language encoder. And as a result, we will get a lot of wrong decoy vaults. And by this, we sample from the distribution. In a second step, we trial decrypt the vault. And by this, we are using plausible master passwords, so passwords that are very likely the real one. And we assume that in our list of tested master passwords, the correct one is in. And this is a valid uh, assumption, because if, you, if we use a normal password vault, we need to crack it anyway. So we need to know it. Then in the third step, we take the samples we got from this trial decrypting, and then we rank it. And hopefully, um, we rank it in a way that the real world is very up on top of this list. And in the final step, we verify our ranking by going online and checking whether we can log in or not. And by this, we can check if our ranking was successful or not. So now next, I want to show the results. But first of all, our experimental setup we conducted. So we used the data set from previous work. And with previous work, I mean the paper where no crack was introduced. Um, this, um, you have to know that this data set contains passwords um, that are a little bit different to normal password leaks that can be found on the web because a password leak consists of passwords from different users. And here we are dealing with passwords that all are heavily related to each other and um, belong to a single user. 
And originally, this data set was gathered uh, via malware. And uh, the data set is grouped in different wall size groups, so we tested three different groups. And we did this ranking with 1,000 walls. And so we used 999 decoy walls and one real vault. And this 1,000 is arbitrary because we are, only, all, we are only interested into our relative ranking only. Then we use the Kohlberg Leibler divergence to measure the difference between the currently observed vault, we don't know whether it's a decoy or not, and the decoy distribution. And we tested the influence of the approximation precision between 1,000 walls and 30 million walls. And we tested the difference in wall size. So we had walls that only consisted of two passwords up to walls um, that consisted of 50 passwords. So in our results, as you can see here, we are always comparing to a perfect natural language encoder. What is meant by perfect here, it's perfectly secure. If an attacker uh, doesn't know, has, doesn't have any background information about this world, it, he will end up with random guessing. So on average, we have to go halfway down the list until we find the real world. That's why we report 50% here. And we compare to previous work, that was the work where no crack was introduced. They used a machine learning approach, a support vector machine, and they exploited features like the n-gram structure and the edit distance. And they reported um, a value of 37.8%. And by this, they were um, at the thought that their scheme is pretty secure. Our approach um, achieved 6.2%. And you have to uh, know that the lower this number is, the better for an attacker. And on the median value, um, the number is even lower with 2.0%. So what are other um, results? First of all, I mentioned we tested the influence of the approximation precision. So the more samples we have, the better. On the x-axis, you can say, see the training size um, from 1,000 to 30 million. On, on the uh, y-axis, you can see the ranking failure. And the lower this number is, the better for an attacker. And the more samples we have, the more precise we can approximate the distribution of no crack, the better for our attack. Of course, this requires more resources in terms of memory and storage. And then we tested different vault sizes. And here, the, it's the same way. The bigger the vault is, the better for an attacker to distinguish real from decoy. So for vaults that are pretty small and only consist of two to three passwords, the mean value is 9.6%. But for bigger vaults, like the vaults in the group of nine to 50 passwords, the mean value is 3.1%. And for all walls, it, it's 6.2%, as mentioned before. Of course, there are more possible ways to distinguish a real vault and a decoy vault. For example, the aforementioned correlation. So users correlate um, personal information. We correlate personal information of the user with their passwords, because users tend to reuse, for example, the first part of their email address or their username and reuse a substring of this in their password. And if we observe this behavior, we are pretty sure that we are dealing with the real world here. Then there is this aforementioned password reuse. People tend to reuse their password across multiple services. And this is something the natural language encoder needs to deal with and needs to simulate precisely. Otherwise, we can use it for ranking and classification. And finally, there are password composition policies. For example, um, this one is from Gmail um, that requires a user to have a password that is at least eight characters long. If we observe any vault and query for the domain google.com or youtube.com and the reported password is less than eight characters, we can be pretty sure that this is a decoy. So if we have a look at this data, then you can see that the correlation attack um, was not such successful. So we first applied this KL divergence attack, and then we used the correlation afterwards. And it even decreased uh, the, the results, meaning it made the results worse. Um, however, we think this is due to the data set. 
we only had the uh, username and sometimes the uh, first part of the email address. So we don't know whether it, it can be useful, but we don't think so yet. Then we have reuse, and as you can see here, reuse is something no crack um, specifically targeted. And in the paper, the authors wrote how they implemented, how they precisely simulated reuse, and they did a pretty good job in this. And finally, there is this policy attack, and this is pretty um, effective. However, it adds another assumption because the attacker needs to know whether the user has an uh, account on a specific website or not, and use this policy afterwards. To summarize, um, if we only consider our KL divergence attack, then um, we reduce the number of required online queries by a factor of eight, which is pretty effective. And if we consider the additional background information like correlation, reuse, and policy, we reduce it by a factor of 20. So next, I want to show how to fix this problem with the, uh, which we found in our analysis. And within, first of all, I want to explain the flaw that we found. So improbable passwords are a strong signal for the real world. And I have an example here. You can see that the password pink row 13 um, we haven't observed during sampling from the decoy distribution. Thus, it's a strong indicator that um, this is the real world. And a pretty easy solution how to fix this problem is by changing no correct distribution. So we simulate the correct, the real password distribution, and then we have solved the problem. That this may look like this. So we have to adapt the, 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 the distribution. However, this is not a good idea because, as I mentioned before, there is no the real password distribution. So distributions differ by service and they differ by time, and it's an inherent flaw of all we call static natural language encoders that they need to predict a distribution during setup time. And we can't predict it. So we have another approach that is better, we think it's better, that do no longer assign low probabilities to passwords that appear in the real world. Of course, then we need to consider the passwords in the real world, but by this we can be sure that um, the real world is hidden among the decoys pretty good. And our approach, um, we followed a Markov model-based approach, and here you have n-grams. So we select a fraction of all n-grams from the real world as well from the decoy walls. We boost their probabilities by a constant value, and then we renormalize. And by this, we hide the um, distribution or the, the engrams in the decoy walls pretty good. We give a, a bound on this in the paper because um, this leaks information, right? We are using um, engrams from the real passwords, and this. Um, it may be dangerous, but we give a bound and we say it's, it's not significant. Then there are f some limitations and future work that needs to be done. First of all, there is a lack of sample data. As mentioned before, you cannot even use a, a password vault, a password leak found on the web, but um, because we need related passwords that um, are not from multiple user, but a single user. Of course, then we can conduct uh, user studies, but um, then you have to make sure it's um, IRB approved and, and so on, and it's not always possible to collect real passwords. It's at least difficult. Then there's this open question whether um, one can guess a master password or not. Um, we can only give an educated guess here and say, yes, it is possible. Um, however, there is no empirical evidence so we need to conduct a user study on this as well. And then um, we don't know, because of the lack of sample data, um, what happens if the master password relates to passwords that are stored in the vault. And this might be a good indicator to find the real vault. And then our construction of adaptive NLA, NLEs is um, pretty straightforward, and we think that we can improve on this as well and make it even more secure in the future. And of course, there's always the possibility to improve the attacks and make it more effective. So the takeaway of this talk is with Honey encryption, you can build cracking-resistant password walls 
that building a natural language encoder is very challenging. We have seen that there are distribution related problems. We have seen that there are reuse problems, correlation problems, and um, password composition policy problems that we all need to consider beforehand. Uh, and I've shown that our adaptive natural language encoder approach can solve this distribution based problem. Thank you very much, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask them now. Thank you. Okay, so are there any questions? I have one. Um, it might not be directly related, to, uh, but you said you tested it with uh, 1,000 volts and 900 and 99 volts are uh, decoy uh, volts. What happens if someone guesses, let's say, uh, 10,000 um, passwords? Are, they, uh, are these uh, decoy volts uh, reused or are they regenerated on the fly? They're, they are not regenerated, they are pre generated. So, um, yes, we tested different approaches, but 1,000 is, um, in terms of um, performance, the best approach, and we are only interested in this relative ranking. So, yeah. But, but if, you, if you guess more than 10, uh, 1,000 passwords, you will see one of the decoy walls twice. Isn't that an approach for, for an attack? Mm, I doesn't know if I understand the question correctly. So, we used 1,000, um, and this is arbitrary, we tested 100 and, and 10,000 as well, 